Welcome to day 3. We are on a 10 day course of conquering the basics of English grammar. Students in uh, video 1 and 2 that is day 1 and day 2 we had uh, learned about the different types of sentences. For those who are new to my channel please do go through those videos and if you have any doubts make sure that you ask them in the comment sections and do subscribe. Now, what have I brought for you today? I have brought to you nouns. Nouns is one of the important parts of speech. Nouns are called as naming words. Noun is a name of a person, place, animal or thing. Right? So what is a noun? A noun is the name of a person, place, animal or thing. And you know what children, when we were small kids, we used to play a very interesting game. Uh, we used to write in the page of a copy. We used to make four columns like this and we would write a name as one heading, place as another heading, animal as another heading, thing as another heading and then total as another heading. And what we used to do is one of us would uh, say A loudly and rest of the letters of the 26 alphabets, it would be silent. So the moment somebody would say stop, we would stop and the letter we stopped on, we would tell that okay, this is the letter that we have stopped on. And everyone who was playing this game had to write the name of a person Name of a place, name of an animal, name of a thing, starting with that letter. So, you know what fun it was? Here you can see that I had to write the names starting with the letter F. So, what I did, I wrote the name of the person as Francis, the name of the place as Faridabad, the name of the animal as Falcon, and the name of the thing as Fork. Now, once the child, whoever has finished, they would come till 10. And once we have reached the counting of 10, then everybody had to stop writing. And after that, we had to each tell our answers what we had written. Now, if the name was unique, then you got 10 points. But if it was not a unique name, that means it, it was shared by somebody else, you had to split the points. Now, imagine if I had written frog, or fish here instead of falcon then I am sure I would have had to take only five points because somebody or other might have definitely written frog or fish so my points would have had split so what I did I was very smart I did not write frog or fish I wrote falcon which was something that not many would write and so I scored 10 similarly I did with F that is the name of the thing I wrote for and I earned 40 points and I collected it over here. And this is how we played the game. The one who scored max was the winner. So the idea was or the trick was to write as unique a name so that you collected maximum points. Now this was a wonderful way of learning your nouns. And also of increasing your vocabulary. So you would see that somewhere I have written F capital and some places I have written F in small letters. Why I did that we will discuss in few moments. Let me repeat. A noun is called as a naming word and it is the name of a person, place, animal or thing. So now that we know what are nouns, let us see how many types of nouns are there, okay? The first one is a proper noun. Second is the common noun. Now remember I had told you that some words I had written in capital letters while some of them I had written in small letters. Why did I do that? So the answer lies here. Proper noun is the name of some particular person or place. Therefore, it will be written in capital letters. For example, Shubhra. It is a name of a particular girl. Rajat. 
it is a name of a particular person who is a boy hyderabad it is the name of a particular city and therefore the first letter s of shubhra r of rajat h of hyderabad would be written in capital letters so a proper noun is identified by the presence of the capital letter right in the beginning of the word many of you make this mistake you write the proper nouns in small letters whereas proper nouns must be written in capital letters so if your name is sneha then s must be capital if your name is radhika then r must be capital if your name is elena then a or e whichever letter you start your name from must be in capital letters now we come to the next one that is the common noun it is a name that's common to every person or a thing of the same class or kind little difficult to understand no when i talk about girl girl is a name given to all the girls right so it's a common name common name for all girls similarly boy is a common name for all boys see in the same manner city in the same manner country now when you talk about tiger many of you would say ma'am why tiger is not a proper noun the reason is very very simple a tiger is not a proper noun because all the tigers that means all the animals that belong to a cat family and have stripes on their bodies they are called as tigers so it is a common name for the entire class of those type of animals therefore you have to call it as a common noun now we have some special names for the tigers also like we have t1 t2 we had rani or badal they were also the names of the tigers so that t1 t2 rani badal will become a proper noun while tiger would be a common noun and you can see children that all the common nouns are written in small letters and this is exactly the number one mistake that you all people make you write the proper nouns in small letters and you write the common nouns in capital letters or you simply write all of them in small letters so you need to remember proper nouns first letter capital common nouns all letters to be written in small now we come to the next two types of nouns we have the collective noun it is the name of a number of persons or things taken together and spoken together as one so you have a collection of people you have a collection of things you have a collection of animals and they are called by just one name and when they are called by that one name that one name becomes your collective noun you have examples like crowd parliament herd team army and many more now a crowd is what it's a collection of lot of people that's called as crowd similarly a collection of a so many players they are called as team a collection of the soldiers would be called as an army a collection of leaders who have been elected and they represent their constituencies are called as parliament collection of animals say for example cows or elephants they are called as herd we come to abstract noun it would be slightly difficult for you to understand but when you actually read when you understand that it becomes the easiest thing to find out so if the name of a quality action or state is asked then it becomes an abstract noun so an abstract noun is the name of a quality 
of an action or a state. Now you would say, what is that? It will become more clear when I give you some examples, right? With these examples, it will become very, very clear to you what an abstract noun is, right? Now look at this. When I talk about quality, name of a quality being an abstract noun, then look at these. Are these qualities or not? Goodness, yes, it's a quality. Kindness, yes, it's a quality. Darkness, brightness, yes, these are qualities too. And it is so interesting. You know, when I was a small kid, I used to enjoy writing mess after the word and come up with an abstract noun. Sometimes I used to make a mistake, yes, but sometimes I used to be right also. So I would want you all also to start playing the game and see how many of the abstract nouns you get correctly. All right, next you see honesty, bravery and wisdom. They are also qualities and therefore these names would be called as abstract nouns. Now look at action. Laughter is an action. Yes. Hatred that is also an action. Why? Because you display your hatred for somebody. You display the hate that you feel. That is an action. Similarly, judgment is an action when you are judging somebody. Theft when somebody is stealing something, then that is called as theft. So when thieves steal something, then we speak about it as a theft having taken place. So theft becomes your action. And when it is an action, it becomes an abstract noun. Now look at the state. Childhood, motherhood. There are so many other hoods. Fatherhood, sisterhood, brotherhood, girlhood, boyhood. So you just add hood to it and you get the state, different states. Apart from that, death, sleep, poverty, these are some more examples of the state. And when we are talking about this state, the name of a state, then we are talking about the abstract noun. I hope children, by now, all these four types are very, very clear to you. Very soon, I would be giving you an assignment and I will see whether you were able to do this assignment or not. Now, let's move on to a different classification of noun. It is very, very easy and it will not take too much of time. Now, we come to nouns that we can count or we cannot count. If we can count them, they are countable nouns. If we cannot count them, they are uncountable nouns, right? So if we can count the name of people, objects, etc., then it is called as a countable noun. You have so many examples, book, pen, apple, sister, doctor, brother, mm, horse, zebra, dog, and so many of them. So all that you can count is called as your countable noun. And if it is the name of a people or object or any other thing that you cannot count, then it becomes an uncountable noun. Example, milk, oil. Obviously, you, can, you cannot say two milk, can you? You can't say two gold, can you? Can you say five honesty? No. You cannot say four sugar, can you? No. So these cannot be counted in numbers and therefore they are called as uncountable nouns. Another important thing that I want you to remember about countable and uncountable nouns is that you can write the countable nouns in plural. That means you can write books, you can write pens, you can write apples and so forth. But, but, but uncountable nouns cannot be written in plurals. They can be written only in singular. So you will write milk. You will not write milks. No. You can write doctors, but you cannot write sugars. You can write apples, but you cannot write honesties. Understood? That's all, my dear, for today. Tomorrow, I am going to bring you some other part of speech. And I hope it will be as interesting as it was today. And maybe it might be a little more too. So till that time, 
keep practicing and yes i told you that i would be showing you the answers of the assignment so the answers of the assignment are also at the end of the video compare your answers and see whether you wrote all correct and if you got them all correct i want to know your name right so in the comment section you will be letting me know that see you take care bye bye